Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to do another uh, round of videos. This is going to be EOC review number two. I'll have this link in the description below. Um, this is going to be covering circles primarily with a little bit of function transformations at the end. The first big section is going to be talking about area and arc length of circles. You can see the standard that's addressed here for the Math 3 content. Um, let's put these formulas in more user-friendly terms with a couple pictures. Primarily going to be dealing with the area of a sector of a circle, which is always going to be the degree divided by 360, since there's 360 degrees in a circle, times the area of the circle. It's a fraction of that area, so times pi r squared. And the length is going to be a fraction of the circumference, which is 2 pi r, so it's the degree over 360 times 2 pi r. Now, you will see another arc length formula that'll come in handy dealing with radians. Um, that's going to be s equals r theta, r times theta. Um, theta is the angle measure still, but it's it's a radian measure as opposed to a degree measure. So if, if you're given a radian as your angle measure, just times it by the radius to get the length. Again, that S just stands for length, but we use the letter S for God knows whatever reason. So um, can't spell length, right? So I guess just to separate it from the L formula over here with degrees. Okay, so let's get into a couple examples. Question, the grass uh, ring forms around a circular garden. If the diameter of the garden inside the circle is 20 feet and the width of the grass ring is five feet, what is the area of the grass ring? This is part one, number one. Now this isn't evolving any central angle, so we're just dealing with the whole circle here. Regardless, we gotta figure out what the radius of that whole circle is and what the inside part is. So I know that the diameter here is the distance across the diameter of the garden inside circle is 20. So I can cut that diameter up into 10, and that's going to give me my radius. So my radius is 10. That's of the inside. Now, if I want to know the outside radius, well, I'm going to have to add that outer ring 5 feet to it. So since that's going to be 5 feet right here, so I can, I can say that whole thing is going to be 15. So the radius of the outside, or just, the, I guess, the whole thing, is going to be 5 plus 10. So now let's answer the question. I want to know the area of the grass ring. Um, that's going to be the outer portion here that's shaded. I can get that by basically taking the whole circle and subtracting the inside. So it's basically the area of the whole circle minus the area of the inside. So what I'll do is I'll use the area formula of circle. Area formula of circle is pi r squared pi times the radius squared. So pi times the whole radius is going to be 15 squared. Subtract pi times 10 squared. You'll want to pause that video and um, see if you can calculate that on. And you can unpause that and check my answer. Uh, with my calculator, I'm going to get about 392.7. You can see my individual calculations there. Um, and so my final answer will be about 392.7, and that'll be in feet squared. All right, we can jot that down. Let's go on to the next question. The circumference of a circle is 40 pi. Find the arc length of a 95 degree sector of the circle. So on this problem here, I'm given the circumference. Circumference of a, of a circle formula is 2 pi r. And since I know the circumference is 40 pi, I can uh, I can set 2 pi r equal to 40 pi. And if I cancel the pi's out, 2r is equal to 40. And that means the radius is going to be 40 divided by 2, which is 20. Now, you don't need to do that, but I wanted to show you how you could get the radius from the circumference. The question wants to know what's the arc length of a 95 degree sector. So if you were to draw a picture out here, you have a 95 degree sector that might look something like this. 95 is just a little bit more than a right angle. Um, and I want to know what is that length right here. I could take that circum that 95 degrees, divide it by 360, and then multiply it by 2 pi r. Now remember, 2 pi r is the circumference. So if I already know that the circumference is 40 pi, I can just say 95 divided by 360 multiplied by 40 pi. Um, and I can get that answer. Now, if you had done all the solving to get the radius, you could also just say 95 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 pi times 
20 and you could plug that 20 back in, but two times 20 is 40. So 40 pi is the same thing. So it's gonna be the same thing. So plug that in your calculator and get an answer. All right, my calculator, calculator gives me about 33.16. And I don't have a unit on that, so that'll just be units. 33.16 uh, centimeters, inches, whatever you want to call that. Okay, that is going to be your length. Again, remember, this is a L, so I'll just go ahead and write L equals L equals 33.16. All right, on to the next question. Part one, number three, if parentheses x minus four squared plus parentheses y minus seven squared equals 121 is the equation of a circle, then what is the area of an 80 degree sector? My last video went over equations of circles. So if you didn't watch that, um, you can go back and look at that if you need to. But all we need from that is the radius. And so if 121 is r squared, then you can actually get the radius by taking the square root of 121. And if you throw that in the calculator or if you know that in your head, um, that's going to give you an 11. We don't need the center for that, so I'm not going to even worry about that. I want to know the area of an 80 degree sector. So the area formula is going to be the degree measure divided by 360. And then we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by pi r squared. And so since r is 11 and my degree is going to be 80 degrees, I'm going to say 80 divided by 360 times pi times 11 squared. Um, now you can put all that in your calculator. Now when I type that in my calculator, in, in this case I'll type in a Desmos, I'm going to get a decimal. Notice all my answers are in terms of pi. So I have a couple approaches to that. I can go through and I could check all my decimal answers from my answer choices. Um, so if I actually went ahead and typed all those in, um, I could match up this decimal here with the correct answer, and that would be 242 over 9 pi, which is fine. You can do that. Um, another approach is my preferred way to do it is actually just to delete the pi when I'm typing it in. So uh, if I go here and I just don't type the pi in, um, it'll bring up this fraction, which I can hit 242 over 9. And then I know 242 over 9 is going to be what goes before pi and 242 over 9 pi is going to be in terms of pi. So it'll be answer choice D. All right, let's go on to the next question, number four. Part one, question uh, number four, the length of a 100 degree arc is five pi. What is the approximate area of a sector of a circle bounded by this arc? All right, so let's see what we got. We got the length uh, of a 100 degree arc is five pi. So I know L is five pi. What's the approximate area? of that same sector. So let's see, length of a 100 degree arc. Let's see what I got. 100 degrees, L, 5 pi. So the thing, thing I'm first going to do is I'm going to write the formula. L equals degree over 360 times 2 pi r circumference. I'm going to plug in that 5 pi for L. I'm going to plug in that 100 for my degree. And I'm going to solve this for r. Um, so in this problem here, what I'm actually going to do to make things a little bit easier is I'm going to divide the pi's out, cancel those out. And then I'm going to basically just divide the 5 by this 100 over 360 times 2. Um, so let's see what that equals. I did that all on Desmos here. Now you can do one operation at a time, but you can see what I did. And I got nine. So I'm just going to stick with the easy route and just kind of do it all in the calculator. So nine is going to be my radius. All right, so I got nine from my radius. Um, now I go ahead and plug it into the area formula. Because this question wants to know what's the area, right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to write um, area is going to equal that same degree over 360. But instead of 2 pi r, it's going to be times pi r squared. Well, now I have R, right? I got 9, and I want to know the area. So let's go ahead and plug all that in. Um, 100 divided by 360 times pi times 9 squared. And that's going to be all calculator work. See what you get. And you can check it with me after you unpause the video. Looks like we're getting about 70.685. I'll round that up to 70.7.
and that's going to be in square units. All right, on to the next question. Part one, number five, what's the approximate length of the arc subtended by an angle four pi over three radians on a circle with a radius of six meters? So the word subtended just means intercepted. So it's, it's another word where we got an angle uh, that's a central angle, but this case it's in radians. So we're gonna use the arc length formula in terms of radians, that's gonna be S equals R times theta, where theta is the radian measure of the angle. S is the length, radius is R. So we have four pi over three, that's your radians. And I know the radius is six and I wanna know the length. That's just multiplication. So R is going to be six. The radian is gonna be four pi over three. Uh, multiply together and get your answer. Looks like we're gonna get about 25, 25.13. So I'll just say about 25.1. Our units are meters, so 25.1 meters. All right, on to the next question. Part one, number six, the diameter of a circle is eight centimeters. A central angle of a circle intercepts an arc of 12 centimeters. What's the radian measure of the angle? This is the same formula because it asks for a radian measure. So we're gonna use S equals R theta, but R in this case is uh, not given, but it does give you the diameter. And remember in a circle, the diameter is always gonna be all the way across. The radius is gonna be half of it. So um, the radius is gonna be the diameter divided by two, which is gonna be four in this case. So now that I have the radius, I can say four is the radius. The question says, what is the radian measure? That's theta. So four times some number is equal to your length. A central angle of the circle intercepts an arc of 12 centimeters. That's your length. In this case, we're gonna call our length S for the formula. So I have 12 equals four times theta. Now I can solve that because theta is your variable. So we wanna solve for the variable by dividing by four. 12 divided by four is three. So your answer is gonna be three radians. Three radians. One more question. Part one, number seven. What is the approximate radius of a circle that has an arc length of 9.5 centimeters and a radian measure of two pi units? Once again, this is going to be radian measure, so it's going to be the same formula, S equals R times theta. So it says an arc length of 9.5 centimeters. That means S is going to be 9.5. It says a radian measure of two pi units. Sometimes radians can be in terms of pi. So we'll leave that as terms of pi to make things a little bit easier when we're calculating. So since I know that is two pi, it says what's the radius? I got to find R. So I'll plug in 9.5 for S. R is unknown, but I know that two pi is the radian measure. So I can solve that by dividing by two pi. Uh, you can do it all like that in Desmos. If you're gonna do it in your calculator, make sure you use parentheses or you divide the two first and then you divide the, the pi second. I'll show you. So you're gonna do divide by two, then divide by pi, or just do it in parentheses, 9.5 divided by two pi. As you can see in Desmos, it doesn't really matter. You can just divide it and it'll put the two pi in the bottom of the fraction if you do this correctly. So uh, 1.51 1, or about 1.5 is your radian measure. Uh, excuse me, 1.5. And this is gonna be in centimeters, so CM. And that's radius, not radian measure. I think I said radian accidentally. All right, that concludes this video. The next video is going to be talking about um, just other properties of circles, uh, segments, angles, all sorts of formulas and weird things going on. So stay tuned. Stick around. We'll be good to go on the next one. Thanks for watching.